Dragon is in configure for terminal count. Falcon 9 tanks are pressing for strong back retract. Heard the call out. We're pressurizing the tanks for strong back retract. We'll hear a sequence momentarily. Strong back is retracting. Actually, that's the start of about a one minute sequence. In about T minus four minutes, the clamp arms that you can see there will open. And then, the, back is and then we will see the retract from there. So we've heard the call out. That's the start of the sequence. Doesn't mean that the clamp arms uh, are late opening. Will take us a few more seconds. As you can hear, the excitement yeah. and the crowd is really growing oh, yeah. uh, here at SpaceX headquarters at Hawthorne, California. There you can see the clamp arms have begun to open. And next we should see the strong back uh, begin to retract. This structure is what we basically use to transport uh, the fully integrated vehicle to and from the hangar, uh, to, from the hangar to the launch pad. And there you can see that strong back retraction has begun. Everything continued to look nominal uh, as we're now under three and a half minutes until launch. RP-1 fuel is fully loaded on first and second stage. Uh, should be wrapping up LOX load on uh, the first stage momentarily and continuing to fill on second stage. Stage one, LOX load is complete. We're under three minutes until liftoff of the Axiom-1 mission. Dragon is the in terminal count and is on internal power. All right, there we heard that Dragon is on internal power. Um, as I was saying, we're getting close. The crowds are growing. The excitement is palpable. You can see there on the left-hand side of your screen, mich Mission Control here in Hawthorne, California, just behind where John and I are. Um, and then on the right-hand side, that looks like Axiom Mission that Control. That looks like Axiom Mission Control in Houston, Texas. Everybody's waving and saying, hey. All right, at this point in time, that lock load on first stage is complete. So the first stage is now fully loaded with all of its propellant. Lock load on second stage continues. As we've mentioned before, stage two lock load is complete. All right, so there's that call. At this point in time, Falcon Nine is Dragon is in auto idle. Dragon is fully loaded with all of its propellants, nearly one million pounds of that propellant. Next event coming gas up. Gas that has started. Expect right now, authentic. the gas closeouts. We have finished pressurizing the storage tanks on board the Falcon Nine. They gave the crew the heads up, and they hear some loud venting noises. We're also going to vent down the liquid oxygen line that carried the LOX up to the second stage, generates a typical large white cloud of condensation around the strong bed. Big event coming up now, T minus one minute, all the flight computers take over. Let's listen in to the last minute of terminal count. FTS is armed, Falcon 9 is in startup and now controlling. Dragon is in countdown. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX Endeavor, we acknowledge, go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. 
Lift off. Go Falcon. Go Dragon. Got speed. Axiom 1. Together, a new chapter begins. Godspeed AX-1. Stage 1 propulsion is nominal. T plus 38 seconds into this historic mission, flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9. All right, telemetry nominal. Stage one throttle down. Throttling down in the preparation for max dynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Stage one throttle up. Berlin 1D engines coming Stage back up to power. One Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. The crew calling out one Bravo should a escape situation arise and tells the Dragon flight computer what profile to fly using the Super Draco engines. But everything is looking good on Falcon 9. We're getting nominal call outs from all the engineers. And a great view from the ground camera and the onboard cameras. Invec chill underway. Beginning to chill in the second stage turbo pump in preparation for its ignition coming up in just over half a minute from now. Coming up on about three and a half G's acceleration for the crew. We'll begin throttling down the Merlin engines to hold that period, that level of acceleration. Next event coming up, we're going to get main engine cutoff stage of the line engines. Get stage separation and ignition of the second stage engine. You've heard the throttle down call out. We're holding three and a half G's for the crew. And Miko. Successful stage separation ignition of the second stage engine. On the left, the titanium grid fins beginning to slowly deploy. Great views from the first stage camera. The first stage now begins a slow flip maneuver. You can see the white uh, nitrogen gas plumes as we reorient for an entry back through the Earth's atmosphere a little bit later in the plus count. Second stage, we see the engine nozzle glowing red. Everything continuing to look good on the second stage. We should be hearing call outs coming up to the crew here shortly on how the trajectory is looking. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. It's what we like to hear. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. And AOS Bermuda, acquisition of signal. The Bermuda tracking station now getting telemetry from the second stage of the Falcon 9 with the Dragon on top. T plus four minutes, 10 seconds. Everything continues to be nominal. First stage coasting to Apogee, and then it will come back down for landing on the drone ship. Second stage, partway through its lengthy burn to get the crew into orbit. So, Kate, four and a half minutes in, everything continues to look good. What a absolutely picture-perfect liftoff. We've got a live view of the crew inside Dragon Endeavor. Looks like... Uh, everyone is still pretty comfy. Uh, as John had said earlier, we got Dragon to... Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. All right, good call out there um, that trajectory is nominal. Uh, yes, never we 
as John mentioned, we got to about three and a half G's there. Position of signal, New Hampshire. On the left-hand side of your screen, we can see the first stage as it is making its way back down to Earth. It's targeting a landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, which is parked a couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida out in the Atlantic Ocean. Second stage on the right-hand side, everything continues to be nominal there as the MVAC engine is powering the second stage and Dragon Endeavor, Dragon Endeavor to its targeted drop-off orbit. Absolutely beautiful views of both the first and second Dragon stages. Dragon trajectory nominal. All right, so coming up in about a minute and a half, uh, the first stage will execute the first of two burns required for today's landing attempt. Um, at about T plus seven minutes and 30 seconds, we'll see the entry burn begin. That's where the first stage will ignite um, the center engine first, and then a couple seconds later, ignite two more engines, so a total of three engine burn, um, which will last about 29 seconds. The entry burn slows the vehicle down significantly as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. The first stage sees high drag, which scrubs roughly 70% of that velocity by the time that the landing burn begins. Stunning view where you can see the curvature of the Earth there on the left-hand side. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. SpaceX and never we have. There you can see the nitrogen gas thrusters. So that's the puff of um, gas that you see there occasionally. That's used for uh, attitude control systems. We also utilize those grid fins that you see. There are four of them uh, placed around the booster. Uh, and those grid fins also help steer for a precise landing. Um, either at Stage the one entry burn startup. Stage two, flight All transition. right, there we can see that that entry burn has begun. We are targeting a landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas today. Everything continuing to look nominal with trajectory and uh, MVAC performance there for our second stage on the right-hand side. So we are conducting the entry burn. Previously, the booster stage was- Stage one entry burn shut down. That entry burn helps slow the booster down. It was going about 25 times the speed of sound. So we slow it down as it re-enters the dense part of the Earth's atmosphere. The next event is second engine cutoff or SECO. One, as you see it there on the timeline at the bottom of your screen. Stage two in thermal guidance. That's where we shut down the MVAC engine or second Shannon, engine cutoff. Shannon. Copy, Shannon. Stage one transonic. Note that our landing burn and second engine cutoff uh, will occur about the same Impact time. Shut down. All right, we got a live view of the crew inside Dragon Endeavor there on the right hand side of your screen. Stage one landing burn. Landing burn has begun for the first day, Dragon first stage. SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. All right, great news there. Dragon Endeavor, nominal orbit insertion. SpaceX Endeavor, we copy and it's great to be here. Zero G and we feel fine. Stage one landing light deploy. SpaceX Dragon launch skip system disarmed. As you can see, this Falcon 9 has landed for the fifth time. All the while, great commentary there. Confirmed. While we can confirm the landing. Confirmed landing there of the first stage booster. Also, almost simultaneously, great news uh, for the second stage. We heard that there was nominal orbit insertion uh, for Crew Dragon Endeavor. There you can see a live view inside our Dragon. 
Looks like the crew is beginning to adjust to zero G. And if you look at the right hand side yeah. corner, That's it looks like indicator. we can see the zero G indicator. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of my that, that was one of the things I really wanted to see what they were gonna bring for their zero G indicator. So I can't wait to see what comes on. It looks I can't quite tell. Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, maybe okay. Well, hopefully it'll it'll come into closer view. Yeah, but, and if not, we'll get to ask them later. Hopefully. Yeah, great to see the crew here again, starting to like, really getting their first taste yeah. of microgravity. Yeah. Oh, it has ears. Oh, it's a bunny. It Is that like Thumper? I think it might be. I think that's Thumper from Bambi. <laughs> Love it. So right now, uh, the second stage is basically preparing for uh, dragon separation. Um, we are the next step now that, uh, as we said, Dragon has nominal orbital insertion. The second stage and Dragon will separate. Views there of our uh, MVAC engine now shut off, no longer glowing that lovely shade of orange. Mm. Right now, the second stage is about 200 kilometers above Earth. Preparing now for stage separation, or excuse me, for dragon separation. For those of you that have just recently joined us, we had an on-time liftoff of the Axiom-1 crew. They are now in space and uh, uh, coming up to separation from second stage, at which point um, they will then begin to make their journey, continue their journey uh, to the International Space Station. The view that you're currently looking at is inside the Dragon trunk, which as you can see has just separated from the second stage. Dragon separation confirmed. On behalf of the Falcon 19, Thanks, welcome Anna, to space. Here. Thanks for flying Falcon 9. You guys, enjoy your trip to that wonderful space station in the sky. Do some great research for us. We'll look to see you back here underground. Now, stand by for some words from LD. And MLA and, and uh, the rest of the crew endeavor. Glad we got to have some fun this morning. We'll probably be calling an early weekend over here at the Cape. Pass you over to Anna and the team. You'll be in good hands. Godspeed endeavor. Enjoy the rest of your flight. Cheers. Hey, Mark. It was a lot of fun. I venture to guess we had a little bit more than you did. We thank you and your launch team, Gersh, you and the Falcon 19. That was a hell of a ride, and we're looking forward to the next 10 days. Hey, Mark. Thank you for the flight. All right. Some... Nice words there from a couple of key folks. Our first Quindar tone of the yeah, mission. Yeah. <laughs> I queued up right when I heard that. <laughs> there we can. Expected, expected loss of signal, Bermuda and New Hampshire. There we can see uh, Dragon Endeavor on its way to the International Space Station. It has separated. There's a view Dragon inside. SpaceX, we have nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. There we can see over the shoulder of... SpaceX Endeavor, we copy, okay. Over the shoulder, previously Commander uh, MLA was on the left and pilot uh, Larry Connor was on the right. Live view inside the cabin. They just got the okay to lift their visors. All right. All right. So we can see that everyone is in space. Yeah. We can see that zero G indicator floating around. Great view there um, of Dragon Endeavor. Now in space with the Axiom 1 crew oh. on their way to the International Space Station. Yeah, I mean, this is a day of firsts. You know, this is my first time getting to participate in a launch like this. This is the first for Axiom. I mean, this is a first for space flight. And it's just wonderful to see such a picture, picture perfect launch. It really was. We saw, we saw the landing <laughs> and we saw uh, orbital or uh, uh, zero G insertion at the same time. I mean, that was perfect. Yeah. It was wonderful to see. 
All right. Well, as I just said, today's launch is one for the history books. So to punctuate this milestone that NASA and commercial companies are able to achieve together, we go now to Kennedy Space Center, where Megan Cruz is with NASA's Kathy Leaders. I am. I'm here right now with the Associate Administrator of NASA's Space Operations Mission Director. It's so great to have you here, Kathy. Mm-hmm. What did you think of the launch? Oh, my gosh. It's, <laughs> it's always like, you know, right in the bottom of my throat. I'm yes. holding. I can't breathe. Can't breathe. Yes. But what a beautiful, beautiful sight. Yeah. So good to see it. I, I want to tell everybody working Artemis 1 wet dress, we're off the range. We're off the range for Axiom 1, and we can get moving. But um, you always want to hear the engine cut off. You always want to hear that second stage engines lighting. You always want to hear, you know, each of these stages and we need to just keep carefully working through the different steps to get that crew there to the International Space Station safely. Yeah. What does Axiom 1 represent? Axiom 1 and also future private astronaut missions to the International Space Station. Hey, you know, NASA's original goal was to enable commercial industry that was actually in our original space act agreement and so here we are you know 60 years later enabling that through our missions and so i just feel like this is a culmination of 60 years of work for us and here we are once again getting to see and for the first time the first time getting to have commercial you know private astronauts going to the international space station and they'll get to see what our government the, what they're calling professional astronauts yeah. doing their real work, and but they're also getting to do their work too. And it's a, it's another place where learning to peacefully work in space, I think, is moving us forward. Yeah, so important. And, you know, we just watched Axiom 1 lift off from that launch pad right there behind us. In a couple of weeks, we're going to see Crew 4 launch from that same launch pad. And then yeah. just right next to it, Pad 39B, we have NASA's brand new space launch system. Can you recall a busier time we've had here at the Space Coast? And how is Kennedy Space Center managing its new role as this multi-user spaceport? So I think somebody else, this is, I mean, Bob Cabana had this dream of a multi-user spaceport here. So I think he should be very, very proud of his (laughs) KSE team. And Janet Petro and her team are obviously leading the way right now. Because this is not easy to do. It's not easy to go make sure all these people have all the capabilities and are obviously working with with our Air Force uh, sister agency there too and making sure that all these launches get supported in a seamless way. Just an amazing job. Yeah, a lot of juggling that has to happen. Yeah. So, you know, I just talked about SLS. We are looking forward to the moon with that launch mm-hmm. later this year. You know, why is it still so important to maintain a presence in low Earth orbit when we're looking towards the moon now? Because we still don't have everything figured out how to do things yet for the moon and Mars. And really the cheapest place for us to see a differential gravity environment and for the long term is still LEO. Yeah. And so we've got to continue to do these long duration flights, keep doing our medical protocols, keep doing our physical protocols, keep testing out our equipment through those long duration missions. It's the only place where we can do that right now. Yeah. And so we still need to be able to have this kind of a test bed for us to be checking out and proving our protocols, our research, our technology before you go put somebody in a rocket that's going to go to Mars, right? Yeah. So just like always, we prepare, we get ourselves ready, and a low Earth orbit destination is a perfect place to do that. And again, how does us fostering commercialization efforts in space, how does that free us up to pursue these other dreams that we have as an agency? So, you know, the administrator today in in the um, pre-mission conference, he said, you know, we right now are doing, this is our first step. We're working with a, a commercial company to have them come to our International Space Station. And we're learning to work together and figuring out how to work together. And this is gonna be an important step for us because moving forward, we would actually like to now be able to 
buy a ride and time on orbit yeah. with the commercial company to be able to have them do that. And so this is the first step of their learning from us and us learning from them. And then in the future, you know, we're going to have space station for another eight years. But we would like by the early 2030s for us to be flipping the roles yeah. and have our professional astronauts going up and, and checking and doing and focusing on the research and technology we need for exploration but allowing commercial providers to be doing the hard work of maintaining the laboratory. Kathy, what an exciting future. I'm looking forward to seeing it, and thank you again for being here. Thank you. All right, back to you, Dan. All right, hey, thanks, Megan. It is great to see the AX-1 mission on orbit. The team here uh, with the space station are ready. We're ready to get them on board. So their journey just started. They've got about 20 and a half hours until they're docked to the space station. Again, they're headed for the Zenith port on Node 2. That's the space-facing one on the very top. Uh, with that docking scheduled right now for 11.45 GMT on Saturday. Uh, that is just about... 6.45 a.m. here in Houston, uh, 4.45 a.m. for the teams out on the West Coast. Uh, once they get there, we'll be able to get into all of the hatch open operations, welcome them on board. We expect the hatches to open up about two hours after that docking, maybe a little bit less, uh, and then that welcome ceremony coming not too long after. So. That'll do it for us for today, at least here from Houston. We're going to be joined again tomorrow by uh, the SpaceX and the Axiom team as we walk you through the final stages of the rendezvous. And that coverage is going to be starting at 4.30 a.m. Central, 2.30 a.m., so an early morning, my friends over there on the West Coast. So 